Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today it's all about the probably the most successful crossbow in the year 2020. <laughs> the EK Archery RX Adder. Let me show you its features. So the Adder. <laughs> it's probably the first tactical crossbow on the market. It is actually immensely successful. We've already sold 6,600 pieces and 4,400 of those are already in the hands of the users. And that's only what we sold via GoGun. And there's probably other importers worldwide that also sold their quantities. And we, we have now completely pre-sold the third container that's going to be arriving in the 15th of June, around that. And uh, we're now pre-selling the next shipment, which is expected to come in September. <laughs> so if you want one of them, you should order soon enough because it's going like hotcakes. Actually, the manufacturer is working at capacity limit. So they're, they're making these crossbows like crazy. Can you imagine thousands of them are selling? And that's because everybody wants one since it's so cool. <laughs> and today the video is all about it and it's a complete video. We're gonna do unboxing, we're gonna assemble it, we're gonna sight it in, we're gonna adjust the laser and the uh, flashlight. Uh, we're gonna do some long-range shooting. Uh, we gonna I'm gonna show you how to exchange the string and how to service it. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a ton of questions regarding targets, regarding bolts, regarding everything. <laughs> so if you're interested in this thing, then uh, keep watching. Okay, then let's do an unboxing. This is the way how the adder looks like when you receive it. First thing we see is the manual. Then we have the main body of the crossbow. And this is the rear stock. In this box we have the red dot sight. This is cleaning rack. And there's also a downstairs. <laughs> Replacement string, string exchange tool and also two end caps. Five blue veined bolts. The 130 pound uh, throwing arm together with the string already on it. The front handle and the uh, rear stock cap and the magazine. Safety goggles, tactical belt. Another Allen key, some rail loop and the screw to uh, fix the magazine to the body. Okay, let's begin the assembly and we're starting with the front end. And we begin by pushing out the uh, little rod here, just like on an AR-15, it can't drop out. Then we put the front end in its slot, like so, and we push in the rod. Done. Now we do the same thing with the rear stock. At this point it makes sense to use a little loop so that the string won't wear out so quickly. And now we put on the magazine box and we will need the thumb screw for this. As you see there are two little hooks here in the front and these are the counterparts on the uh, system itself. And then you slide it in and push it back. And then you take the thumb screw and simply mount it. Very firmly in place. Okay, we have the front handle. You don't have to use it because you can actually comfortably shoot this like so. But I like it, that's why I always mount it. <laughs> So before we mount the red dot sight, uh, it's uh, best to install the battery. And for this we just remove this rubber cap, put it in and then uh, put the rubber cap back on. Now 
The red dot has actually two different brightness settings. Off, small, strong. It is actually smaller than it appears in the camera, that's because of all the focusing and so on. Before we install the red dot, we take the uh, delivered Allen key and we release these screws a little bit. And then we simply put it onto the Picatinny rail, like so, and we tighten the screws. And if you want, you can attach the belt and then, you know, hang it around your neck so that you can walk with it and uh, just like going to war, <laughs> take it and shoot at any time. Now we have to put in the bolts and then the weapon is ready to shoot. So if you buy the error from Gogan or from one of our dealers, uh, then and only then you will get this little thing here. What is this? It's an adjustable attachment for a laser pointer and for a zoomable flashlight. And the purpose of this is so that you can use it to hunt in the night. Because the red dot is useless in the night and it's a tactical crossbow. You should be able to use it in the dark, right? So you simply clamp in the laser pointer and the zoomable flashlight. These are not part of the package. You could buy them extra, but you could also buy them on Amazon. It's just standard stuff. And um, what you do is you can switch on the light. And as you see, it's zoomable. And even in broad daylight, and it's a May day here, even in broad daylight, you can easily see it. And you can also see the laser pointer. Of course, that is more for night shooting. In the daylight, you have the red dot, which is much more uh, suitable for daylight shooting. To install it, you simply take the other delivered Allen key and remove the uh, left Picatinny rail. Very important, don't remove the right one because uh, the holder has to be attached to the left side. Okay, here you put the uh, spring in, in and it's very important to use it because uh, I'll explain it to you later. So this is how it looks like. Don't tighten the screws all the way because we have to shoot the thing in. So we go and shoot it in. Uh, side it in and uh, don't forget the two Allen keys, you're gonna need them. Okay, so this is, this is 10 meter distance and we're gonna do a few shots at our target. Uh, just uh, switch on the wet dot and go. So you push the lever all the way to the front and then you push it back so that it actually clicks into the pistol grip here. Let's take a look. Okay, I clearly see this is uh, a little bit to the left and to the low. So we have to bring it over a little bit to the right and up. Okay, we can adjust the sights using this, these two screws here. So we want it to go a little bit to the right. So we give it a quarter turn counterclockwise. And also we want it to bring up. So we give it a full turn to the upwards direction. Means we move it counterclockwise, like so. And we try again. Let's take a look. Okay, that was all right. See, we just give it a little bit like an eighth of a turn back to the left and uh, then we will be in business. Okay, so if I want to sight in the laser, then I need something dark because in daylight it's too hard to see it. But it's super easy to get the laser sighted in. As you already have sighted in the red dot, so all you have to do is bring the laser pointer exactly to the point where the, where the red dot is, is at. Okay, so I just uh, adjusted the height, uh, so I can tighten this screw now. And to do the left-right adjustment, I use this uh, screw here against the power of the spring. So now you can see that the laser and the red dot 
are ex exactly overlapping. Okay, so the sun has disappeared and now we can see the laser. Let's see if it works. We can now also shoot from the hip. <laughs> At this point, people always ask, so what's the maximum distance? Well, this is a tactical crossbow. It's not a, a sharpshooter sniper type of uh, crossbow. Um, and it's been designed to shoot at between like 10 and 25 maximum 30 meter distance And that is why there is a red dot sight that has no magnification since you can keep both eyes open So that you see the environment, but you also see the red dot or the laser <laughs> um, But of course it is precise enough to also shoot from longer distances, but then it makes sense to do some modifications uh, and, uh, But otherwise of course it will hit from 50 meters too so this is an adder that I modified for long-range shooting, long-range 50 meters. <laughs> First of all, I insta installed a cheap bipod that I can also fold in, very inexpensive. And I also put in a different, put on a different sight. This is still a red dot sight, but it has a magnification. It has a four-time magnification, uh, so it, it's actually a, a mini telescopic sight, but it is also illuminated. And um, that is really good because this makes it possible to really aim uh, on such long distance because the original red dot the red dot would actually cover most part of the target So very hard to hit something if you can't see your target <laughs> Another modification that I had to do to get it sighted in at 50 meters Because the arrow actually drops quite a bit on 50 meters and this is a magnific magnification in here So therefore I would have to hold over uh, and I would no longer actually see the target in the in the optics here anymore I would actually hold over so much that the target would be out of the picture and therefore what I did is I saw the magazine body open and then I put a wedge a wooden wedge inside and glued it in place so that the entire thing is now a little bit more upwards so it's actually a little bit canted towards the front and this means that I can get it sighted in so that it really centers on the on, on the target those are the targets and actually it's not easy from 50 meters believe me that's a long distance for a crossbow and these are zombie brain size <laughs> okay quite a distance 50 meters and those are small balloons i'll try to hit as many of them as i can it's not going to be easy Okay, I got the first one. So then, erst number. Ah, I touched it, but I didn't hit it. Ich habe ihn berührt, aber nicht getroffen. Den habe ich erwischt. Got that one. Ha. So I got three out of four. That's not bad. So let's clean it off with my homemade scuba springer underwater prototype. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to film through the scope when I'm shooting at a balloon. <laughs> the EK Archery RX Adder. I think it's a fantastic tactical crossbow. Uh, it has everything you need. Uh, fast shooting, lots of power, very accurate. Uh, it's a beautiful design. <laughs> <laughs> Affordable. <laughs> Designed by a cool guy. <laughs> um, in any case, I'm going to add a lot of uh, Q&As now. Uh, for those that either have bought the adder and, or for someone who really wants to know everything about it. Uh, for those that don't want to watch any longer, 
that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks and bye bye. It's kind of hard to pull these out. So therefore, take some pliers. And this is actually the spot where you hold them. Not here, because then you're going to pull out the knock. And not here, because then you're going to crunch the hollow carbon uh, shaft. You push it here, because then the, the end of the insert is in here. So you can't destroy the ball this way. So this is exactly how you put the pliers on at this spot. Because you can't crunch the carbon fiber shaft and you won't pull out the insert if you hold it here. Okay, we see that this actually has suffered a bit. Um, and that's not a big deal because you just simply have to use a heat gun or a hair dryer and uh, heat it up and then it's gonna straighten like magic. Okay, like for this bolt, it's time for heating it up for this one too. So let's do it. Okay, so now that we've done about like 30 shots or so, it's time to check if the string is still all right. And for that reason, of course, you could simply remove the arrows and look inside and then you'll see it. <laughs> but you can also remove the magazine box and then check it up. It's recommended, I think, that you check it up like every 30 shots or so, just to be on the safe side. Okay, we see now that the string has suffered a little bit. It's not torn, it's just there's a pressure point and I would actually give it some wax at that, at that stage. Very easy. Okay, now you could take the uh, rail loop that has been supplied, but I actually like real uh, wax for string, for both strings, and uh, you can actually get this in, in any archery store. Okay, so some people heat it up. I don't do it. I simply put it on like so and then rub it in with my fingers. And yes, then the string looks super again. Okay, but what if if the string is really damaged. Well, first of all, usually it's only the middle serving that suffers. And if you check it up early enough so that you see that the main string is, is still okay, it's just the middle serving that is frayed, then you can simply replace it. You can get the middle serving string uh, in archery stores, online, everywhere. And there's a ton of tutorials about how to repair those. Uh, there's no difference between the adder and any other crossbow in that regard. But also on the adder you get a replacement string and a help string, a tool. Uh, uh, you get this with the adder, it's actually part of the package. And I'll show you now how to install it. Okay, what you do is you take the help string and you put it over the original string. And there's actually an extra notch in the end cap on both sides. And then you got like an extra set of, uh, of strings here. So you got a string that is not there to shoot, but just only to uh, service the system. Because what you do is, you simply notch this in, like so. Okay, as you see, it's, it's in here. And now you simply cock the crossbow, just like you want to shoot. <laughs> and now look what you can do. You can remove the string very easily and take it off and put it on again. So this is how you exchange it. Okay, and once you're there, you simply repeat. You bring this back to the front, and like magic, the original string is replaced. And then you can take off the help string and you're done. So, the thing, the magazine holds six bolts, but the manufacturer, manufacturer only recommends five. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a punchline now, <laughs> but I always keep saying it. But there is some truth in it, and I explain. So, see, this has been uh, filled with six bolts, not five, and you can see that as long as this thing is relaxed, uh, you can see that the lever really is in a funny, awkward position. That's going to change as soon as I cock it, because then the string will no longer be underneath the bolts, and then the lever will be in a cool position. See? Now the lever is pressing at the right spot on this here. But there is another reason why I'm loading six bolts into this thing here now that I'm going to do 50 meter shots. And that is because um, see, the arrows are stacked in here and the lever presses on them. But of course, it's, you know, the pressure comes from the bolt that is above the one that is actually in the rail. 
and um, it actually guides it the entire way because the bolt above actually spreads the pressure downwards. Now on the last bolt that isn't the case anymore. Only the end of this lever here touches down on the on the bolt and this means that it will still work and on a short distance like 10-20 meters you won't see a difference but on 50 meters you gotta have everything right. So there must be the same amount of pressure and the same uh, part uh, must be pressed on as uh, every time otherwise you're gonna uh, miss your target so therefore when I'm doing precision shooting I load it with six bolts but I only use five and then I reload then people often complain that the bolts will actually suffer so much be uh, because the arrows will go all the way into an archery mat so that the veins will suffer uh, horribly and um, well there's something that you can do about it and I'll show you. Just let me shoot like two bolts uh, into my setup here. Let's take a look. So as you see, the arrow did not go in all the way. It stopped right ahead of the veins, so the vein is not damaged. And that is because I put in a particle board in between one old layer of a mat here and the main mat. And the particle board, normally the uh, if you directly shoot at it, the uh, bolts would crash right through and then it would be very hard to get them out again. But here it's decelerated by the first thin archery mat here enough so that this stops it and it is fairly easy to get it out, like so. All right, let's talk about the bolts. This is a standard bolt for the adder. As you see, um, it has blue veins. Uh, it's a little bit different to the one sold for the R9. And um, it is very important that you use the knocks that are actually built for this, since they're flattened here. See, half moon knocks, but they're flattened at the side. So if you just use a normal knock for a normal crossbow bolt, it won't fit. So I don't recommend making your own bolts because it doesn't justify the, uh, the, uh, uh, the work and also not the price. These are affordable bolts. Uh, the R9 bolts are glued in, but this one is actually screwed in, so you can exchange the tip, just standard. What we offer for the uh, adder is this bodkin tip. As you see, it's very pointy, very sharp, and also edgy. Uh, this is the highest penetration, that's why they used them in medieval times. You can buy these extra, and those are the best penetration that you can get for the money, I think. You can also use regular broad heads, but then you have to like saw off the arrow, make it a little shorter, and glue in an insert. It's a 6.2 millimeter insert. You can buy them on Amazon. And um, then you can use uh, broad heads, 2D broad heads, otherwise you can't really stack them. Uh, it's very important that you glue them in in a way that they are actually aligned just like the veins, otherwise it will jam in the magazine. This is a vein that is designed and sold for the R9 uh, Cobra. Uh, the single shot version of the adder and actually as you see the dimensions are almost identical same length they have the same knock the veins are at the same position it's just that those are red but the difference is in the tip as you can see this is a glued in tip which makes the bolt a lot lighter so this is heavier and this is lighter so this one actually is not really recommended for the 130 pound bow limp um, but it works. So if you can't get these, then these will work as well. They will of course fly faster, so I guess if you want to do long range shooting, they're actually a little bit better. Uh, I have no idea if the strings uh, break earlier. I didn't notice that in my tests, and the manufacturer does not recommend using these bolts, but I can tell you they work. <laughs> Okay, so problems. Well, there's one known problem that is, of course, uh, a user error. And it's actually already written on the magazine. It says here on the magazine, I'm not sure if you can read it. Warning, before shooting, check that only a single bolt is properly seated in the groove of the flight track. Yeah, that is a problem that can happen if people use it wrong. And I'll show you how it happens. Okay, I'll show you how that can happen. When you bring this thing to the front, but not all the way, just almost and then you bring it back to the front you see that of course since the latch never engaged on the string you still shift out the bolt and then you go oh oops I have done something wrong I shouldn't have done that um, then you go and cock it another time then actually you have one bolt that's poking out and one that is right behind and if you don't notice and shoot then actually one bolt hits the other one and that can even mean that the entire magazine 
actually actually breaks off and uh, and the thing is broken. So this is what they mean when they say make sure that this is not blocked in the groove. What you have to do is you always have to go all the way. So if you cock it, go all the way to the back and all the way to the front. Then it won't happen. Then a lot of people ask how do you decock it? Well that's very simple. First let's cock it and now I keep Oh, I don't want to shoot. How to decock it? Well, you could fire into the ground, but then usually the bolt is broken. We don't want that. Well, very simple. You just simply move this back to the front with the lever, like so. And then what you do is you move it back a little bit so that you can disengage the safety. And then you can actually grab the trigger in between here. So here is the trigger and you can grab it and you pull it and then you move the system back. Then of course the arrow pokes out because we simulated a very slow shot. <laughs> then you simply take the arrow, feed it back in and you have uh, the crossbow in your next condition again. Okay, let's talk about the power. So this is a 130 pound uh, front end bow. Uh, you can also get a 90 pound and a 110 pound version. Uh, and those actually do make sense. They make sense specifically when practicing because it's actually so much easier to cock and uh, they are also easier on the bolts since the bolts will not penetrate as deeply and therefore they last longer. Uh, and also probably someone who has very limited bodily strength, even though the huge lever effect makes it possible for everyone to cock it, I think. But if you think that you are like weaker than average, then maybe the 90 pound or the 110 pound front end bow is something for you. Will there be uh, like heavier uh, front ends than this one? Uh, yes, actually, um, I think that that will be the case. I've actually seen prototypes that are heavier than this one, uh, maybe 150 pounds or something, but there's no release date and there's no specifications and no pricing yet. It's also questionable if, it's really, if it really makes sense, because at some point you also have to use different bolts, since, you know, if the bolts are too light for the power of the front end, then the bolts will suffer greatly and the string will suffer greatly and it doesn't really make much sense. I think this is powerful for pretty much everything. I mean, you can penetrate a zombie brain uh, covered by uh, riveted chainmail. So what else do you want to do with it? Shooting water buffaloes is not the right crossbow for that. A lot of people ask, can I just buy the magazine because I got an R9 already or I got a, a cold steel cheap shot, which really basically is like a previous generation of this, just single shot. Otherwise, a lot of parts are similar, but the main body of the crossbow is different. Since this has the attachment uh, on the rail for the magazine box, and also the system is completely different, so it holds the thumb screw and so on, it doesn't fit on the cheap shot and it doesn't fit on the R9. Those are different crossbows. Is this also for lefties? Yes, it's absolutely ambidextrous. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> In any case, all the, uh, all the features are available from both sides. Now this feels super awkward, but I guess I could shoot it that way. There's also a question is, can I attach telescopic sights? Well, um, I already showed you that it is possible to use a very short telescopic sight. If you use a larger one, then you would have problems accessing the uh, slot for refilling the magazine. And therefore, this is actually something that I don't recommend. You would actually have to mount it higher or mount it sideways or something. It's possible, but it doesn't make sense. This is a tactical weapon and a red dot is the right aiming device for a tactical weapon. I don't recommend using anything but a red dot on this weapon. Then a lot of people want to know, is there like a quick loader for this? No, because the lever only lifts up to this point here. Therefore, you cannot really put the arrows uh, from in from the top. Uh, you have to feed them in just like on a Winchester or something. So uh, there is no speed loader and I don't think that there will be one. Then a lot of people want to know what this is. This is actually a prototype of a new generation of a spring powered underwater harpoon gun, like a spare gun um, that I'm developing. And this is actually a test device to see if it's viable. Uh, and uh, I made these bolts from uh, nails <laughs> with different tips <laughs> and it's weak but fun. Yeah, I can cock this at any time simply by pushing it in like so. And now it's cocked and locked and I can shoot at any time. <laughs> Sproing. Yeah, well, of course, uh, it won't be rivaling this uh, scuba ringer that we are offering. 
which is a great underwater pistol. It's actually operated with uh, pressurized air up to 350 bar, like, like 5,000 PSI. Uh, I even got this watertight holster for it that actually holds two reserve arrows with cartridges right on there. So uh, it's very cool, but it's also expensive because high pressure parts. I mean, they need to be tight, they need to hold. And therefore my idea is to use springs instead for a cheaper version. Maybe even six shots like an underwater revolver. And the, I, no, no, the idea is to use uh, stronger springs. This is now like four inches. Uh, and I've actually ordered 12 inch versions of the springs. I also went thicker on the wire diameter. So they will have a lot more power. Let's see if they are strong enough for serious use.